Now, GMB has been told that dozens more post office workers may have been wrongly prosecuted after taking part in a pilot scheme, an experimental scheme, of the faulty horizon system. And this was four years before the full software rollout faulty software rollout in 1999. That's according to the Labour MP, Kevin Jones, who is a member of the Horizon Compensation Advisory Board, and Kevin joins us live now. A very good morning to you. Um, good morning. What morning. was this scheme, and how many people do you think were wrongly prosecuted because of it? Well, evidence has come out at the public inquiry about this, but I actually found out last year when I visited a sort of postmaster who had been uh, wrongly convicted or thought they'd been wrongly convicted. Only when I went to see them was that the dates that the individual gave me didn't match up with the Ryzen. Mm -hmm. When I then approached the post office, it, uh, evidence came out of this pilot scheme with 300 people which took place before the Ryzen scheme. I now know that there's at least one other individual that was prosecuted for taking part in this pilot. So let's just get this clear. This was an experimental rollout, as you say, of about 300 post offices. And the whole point of a pilot and an experimental rollout of technical kit is to see if it works properly. And when it didn't work properly, even then, the post office made the instant assumption that the, somehow these postmasters had, had, had gone bent. I know it sounds remarkable, but I've been dealing with the uh, post office for many years now on this. And... Nothing ever surprises me about the post office. Uh, the problem, I think, with the post office, is, and it's, been, it's come out now at the public inquiry, is part of the contract, is if there were shortfalls, the post uh, masters act to make up the difference. And, uh, you know, that's what the uh, post office just assumed uh, would happen. Did the post office conceal this? Because they certainly didn't reveal it. it it's only become public knowledge uh, for the last four weeks. Well, that's what, you know, is just astounded about this entire episode and this scandal, is you would have thought, with all the publicity around Horizon, the post office would have said, well, we have possibly another problem with this uh, pilot scheme. They didn't. It took it. It took the inquiry, the public inquiry, to people to write in uh, there about it, and also for me to actually speak to individuals that were part of it. We now need a full explanation from the post office: what was this pilot, and who was actually prosecuted? They are the masters of the cover-up, aren't they? Well, it's the only that that is the point that you've got to get over, and I think that's why the. Uh, drama was very good, not only exposing the lies and deceit that took place, but I think what was, was good about it, it showed the complete heartache and broken lives that this uh, has inflicted. And obviously you've got Jess on next. And anyone who's met uh, many of these victims will know that they're very proud individuals. And that's one of the problems about overturning the conviction. Most of these people will not come forward. And the reason why, they will not go anywhere near a court of law uh, because of the trauma and uh, disruption to their lives, and not only in their lives, but their families' lives, uh, because of this scandal. And, and we spoke to the post office minister last week, and one of the questions was, why have only a fraction of those convicted had their um, cases overturned, their convictions overturned? He said that people have to come forward. But, Kevin Jones, why do they have to come forward? Mm. Why, firstly, can the government not contact every single person or just offer a blanket exoneration if your case yeah. was clearly one of these where there was, you know, a, a false prosecution, of, a, a, you know, the, they got their facts wrong, whatever, you know, I, in my mind, these, these poor individuals were scammed. They never owed this money and they should never have been prosecuted. Why can't they just be given a pardon... The, you know, their reputation's completely cleared. I totally agree with you. And the problem is, is they have to come forward. And if you actually meet the individuals I've just said, uh, many of them will not come forward. And the fair to the uh, post minister, he hasn't actually written to a lot of these individuals. There's 927 of them, and only 93 have been overturned. But these individuals are not going to come forward no. because they're not going to put themselves through the heartache of a court case But why again. can't they uh, just receive a blanket exoneration? If, that, if their well, case that's... came in those dates yeah. on those facts, which we now know weren't facts at all, why can't... Is that possible legally? 
Well, that's what uh, myself and the other members of the advisory board have uh, written to the Lord Chancellor, to the Justice Secretary, saying that because it's now been clearly demonstrated in court and at the public inquiry that the uh, Horizon system was uh, not uh, robust and at fault, any convictions that were resulting of that system must be unsound. Right. And I agree totally. There should be a uh, blanket uh, pardon. I, I, think, I think we all do. Um, Kevin Jones, MP, more power to your elbow. Um, and it's no surprise these people don't want to come forward. It's a case of once bitten, twice shy, isn't it? Well, we're now joined by somebody who did come forward, one of the victims of the scandal, former sub-postmaster Jess Corr, whose story was also depicted in ITV's drama. Mm, she was relentlessly pursued by the post office for theft. But her case was eventually thrown out, not before she suffered a complete mental breakdown, tried to take her own life and received psychiatric treatments, including shock therapy, which was all depicted on the drama. Jess. Yeah. And what is remarkable, thank you for coming in and, mm. and for speaking out. Thank you for having me. Is it was years this went through the courts. Yeah. Eventually, they couldn't produce the evidence. No. The case was dropped. You have not received compensation no. or an apology. No. Uh, that, I think, is unforgivable. Yeah. What impact has this had on you? Um, since the drama series yeah. has come out, um, there's a lot of people that are getting in touch with us. Um, a lot of media out there has been in touch with me as well, like yourselves. Um, I'm glad it's out there. Yeah. It needs to be out there. And that I'm not the only one suffering. It's um, a hell of a lot of people. And to be able to, to show the drama and then people actually realising mm. what is actually going on... It was... You went through beggar's belief. Yeah. Um, not only were you pursued by the post office, but local people, understandably, I suppose, believed what they were reading in the newspapers. Well, they um, always... And, yeah. But unforgivably, then went on to come in and spit on the floor of your shop. Yeah, they uh, spat on the floor, they threw newspapers on the floor, they smashed my car windows. They uh, should be ashamed of themselves. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. And this, the impact of all of this, not just the legal action by the post office, but, but the community reaction, not everybody, but, yeah. but, but these individuals, it almost drove you mad, didn't it? It did, yeah, yeah. It drove me so mad that um, I tried to commit suicide. And you ended up in, in, in hospital. Yeah. And as we saw in the drama, you were given... It, things were so extreme with you. Jess. Are you all right? You yeah. Okay? Okay. Jess, you, honestly, you show such strength by speaking out, and I, I, I can imagine your family is so proud of you for doing that, and the community as well will know the truth. Mm. I find it unforgivable, unacceptable, that the post office has not apologised to you personally, that they put you through this. It is absolutely, I would say, criminally irresponsible. You were accused of stealing £11,000. It was absolutely not what had happened. You had not stolen a penny no. from the post office. It's disgusting the treatment that you have had to endure. And it is obvious to anyone watching that this has severely impacted your confidence yeah. um, and your life. Look, I, I hope and I don't know if Kevin Jones is, is still there. I hope we can get you redress. Kevin Jones, I don't know if you're listening, and, and clearly this, is so, this has had such a massive impact on Jess. What is the explanation? You are on the Compensation Advisory Board. What is the reason why someone so devastated by something, someone innocent, a pillar of the community, someone who was running a community hub, the post office, one of the most trusted institutions previously... Previously. ..you know, with enormous integrity. What is the reason why Jess, in particular, has not received not just compensation for the devastations she's been through, but an apology? Can you... Have you got any explanation? Yeah, arrogance uh, and, I think, uh, bureaucracy. Uh, I think we need to press on people like Jess. Jess is one of many, uh, uh, and, you know... 10 out of 10 for her for coming on this programme, mm -hmm. which must be very difficult for her. Uh, but, you know, she's gone through mental torture. A lot of other people have gone through that, but she's been brave enough to uh, stick with it. And the only thing that I could say to uh, people who haven't met any of the victims is, you know, I, I have tremendous respect for them, 
but also my I get angry, frankly, because uh, you know this was co this this was not people making mistakes. This was deliberate cover up, yeah. and people like Jess went through uh, torture, and her family did for no good reason apart from. Uh, the arrogance of the post office and those individuals who should have known better. Absolutely. But just why hasn't she received compensation, Kevin Jones? Well, I, I don't know about uh, Jess's uh, individual case, but part of the problem is, is we've now got three schemes which yeah. have made it very bureaucratic. Myself and James Arbuthnot, who sit on the Compensation Advisory Board, along with two academics, are pressing for speeding up this process. And there's one thing that this drama has done, is we need to put... Uh, turbochargers behind making sure that not only they get compensation, but we bring to account those people uh, who were responsible for this. Do you think they should, that individuals should be prosecuted? Well, uh, look at the evidence in court and the evidence that's come out in the uh, public inquiry. Yeah. Uh, you know, there is umpteen, uh, I think, charges that could be laid against quite a number of individuals. Uh, and that's got to happen because I think compensation is vitally important. No amount of compensation is ever going to, I think, replace what Jess and her family have gone Absolutely. through. But, but I think what, what people do need is they want to ultimately to know uh, that people are going to be held to account. That's what Tom Brown, my constituent, who sadly died before Christmas, before he could get justice, wanted. He wanted to know what happened and that people that made uh, these decisions are going to take the beginning. Well, public... public uh, so Public opinion is solidly behind that. There are very, there are millions of people in this country who want to see the individuals responsible go to jail. They want, yeah. to, never, never mind, just prosecuted. They want to see them in prison. I just want it all behind me now to be able to get on with our future. Mm. Um, one thing I did want to bring up as well is the fact that while I was in hospital, um, the, the post office didn't believe that I was there, so they sent their own um, doctors. They thought you were lying yeah. about being in hospital. Me in and hospital. they sent their own doctors to check that you were there. Yeah, and then they examined me as well. Oh. Yeah, so n no, not only was I getting the electric shock treatments, I was always get also getting grief off them. To and these, the, I was going to ask you when we, we paused the interview, you, you're, you're back in the saddle now, um, th this electric shock treatment, it's robbed you of, of, of memories. Memory, you've you've yeah. lost memories of your childhood. Childhood, yeah. And you're still on medication, aren't still you? Still on medication, it's Quite yeah. substantial medication. Yeah, yeah. Well, we pray that you get the compensation and the apology that you so richly deserve. Thank you. And, and you the irony is that we have this statement from the post office which says we are acutely aware of the human cost of the scandal and both, both, both post office and government are continuing to provide full and fair compensation. But you haven't received Nothing. a penny in compensation. No. It's just words, isn't it? No. It's yeah. just words. Yeah. Well, we send you our blessings. Thank you. And the best wishes for the future. Thank you for having thank, me. And thank you for your bravery in coming on. It was a real ordeal for you. Thank you.